Hey everybody. This is my 10 gallon living room tank and I just threw a little bit of food in there. I've got a new fish in this tank and I'm hoping it'll come out to eat. I don't know how well you can see it or not. It's in the bottom left part of the screen. It's making its way into the light. There it is. I got a powder blue dwarf garami in this tank and it looks pretty good and healthy. It was in the fish store tank for about two weeks so I'm not too concerned about it having any kind of ick or any obvious uh, ailments so I'm not going to worry too much about the quarantining process but I do want to talk about water chemistry a little bit here and I'm going to use this fish to do it we're going to be able to just sit here and watch the fish for a few minutes while it's in its brand new environment I just got it acclimated to the tank about 20 minutes ago so this is all new environment for it when I first started keeping fish one of the very first fish I ever kept was a powder blue dwarf garami and I've loved them ever since I kept it for about three years before it died and I've always tried to have a powder blue in at least one of my tanks somewhere ever since and I've never had any luck ever since that first one and I could just never figure out why I could never keep them alive for more than a few months the first one I just had no problem with it and I'm beginning to realize that my water for as much as I thought that the sodium in my water and I'll get to that in a few minutes if you don't know what I'm talking about but I thought that the sodium in my water that's a result of my water system was what was causing issues with my fish I now believe that it was not so much the addition of the sodium in the water I think it's the reduction of the calcium and the magnesium and potassium and everything else I have no mineralization in my water at all so I've added some crushed coral and crushed oyster shells to add some potassium or some uh, calcium and magnesium I'm sure there's some potassium in there too somewhere and I'm hoping the addition of those uh, mineral ions into the water will be enough to keep this powder blue alive now the reason I believe I think that the first one I had lived for so long and then suddenly they didn't anymore has to do with my water and how well I stayed on top of maintaining my water system and I figured this out by my, my house plants is what actually helped me to figure all this out so it's kind of a complicated story so sit back and pay attention or not whatever that's up to you but one day I noticed my house plants started just looking terrible all of them except for certain ones my peace lilies in particular everything started looking terrible except for the peace lilies and I just couldn't put my finger on why after all these years all our house plants always looked fine and then suddenly my house plants were just not doing well the leaves were yellowing they just looked like they were drying up no matter how much I watered them and so one day as I was dumping you know 120 pounds of salt into my water treatment system it all sort of clicked for me the reason my peace lilies didn't die is because in the aquarium hobby they're sold as Brazilian swords and they are a marginal plant and they can live in in fact I've kept them in brackish water before if you look far enough back on my brackish tank playlist uh, you'll see that at one point it was an open top tank and I had all sorts of plants growing out the top of it um, if you're interested in an open top tank there's tons of plants you can put in an aquarium that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being uh, aquarium plants but if they if you're willing to have them grow up and out of your tank uh, there's lots of marginal plants out there you can use and the peace lily or Brazilian sword is one of them and it does well in low-end brackish water whereas most plants can't tolerate salt in the water at all and that's exactly what was going on early in my fish keeping hobby I didn't worry so much about the water and I've never worried that much about the water system we used to let it run out of salt or I should say I used to let it run out of salt all the time because I never cared I know our groundwater isn't contaminated with anything other than nitrates and it's kind of acidic so you know the water treatment system we have isn't necessarily a softener but it kind of is it actually hardens the water first to take the acidity out of it you know I, I add calcium and magnesium to bring the pH up so that the acidic water doesn't dissolve my pipes and appliances and everything 
And then after I've added calcium and magnesium, it then goes back through the softening part of the system and it removes all that calcium and magnesium, but it replaces it with sodium. The sodium keeps the pH stable, but I've got no mineralization except for the sodium ions in my water. And once I started getting a little more serious about keeping the fish and I stayed a little more serious on keeping on top of my water, I never ran out of salt and therefore I never ran out of or, or I never, you know, there was always sodium ions in my water. In the past, I would go so long between filling the thing up that I would flush out my house plants and the soil would get, you know, fresh water flush through it with lots of nitrates in it. And once I started paying a lot more attention and staying on top of keeping that salt reservoir filled, from then on, my plants began just getting more and more and more sodium added to the soil. Every time I watered the plants, I was putting more sodium in the soil. And eventually, after a few months of that, the soil was actually drying the plants out. There was more, you know, a higher concentration of sodium in the soil than in the plants and the plants actually began giving up their water into the soil it's the same reason most plants can't live in salt water so that's what was going on and once i figured that out i started watering my plants with ro water and in a few cases i changed over the potting soil and put fresh potting soil in it and instant no more problem that's exactly what the problem was it was too much sodium building up in my you know in the potting soil so what that told me how this relates to fish you may wonder what that told me was back in the day when I had my original powder blue dwarf garami that lived for so many years that was back when I wasn't so worried about my water and a lot of the water changes that got done while they may have had a lot of nitrates in the water it also probably had some minerals. I do have very soft groundwater, but it's probably got some mineralization in it. It's groundwater after all. So my original powder blue probably survived as long as it did because it wasn't in water that had been stripped of all its minerals. And by the time he died and I got new ones, by then, I was really staying on top of my water and making sure I never let that salt reservoir run dry. And, you know, so from then on, I was never able to keep one of these powder blues alive. So I think by adding the um, poultry grit in the back, the crushed coral and the crushed oyster shells, I think the mineralization of this tank will be enough to now allow me to keep this powder blue dwarf garami alive and it'll probably if nothing else at least just make my other fish in the tank healthier so there you go that's kind of my little experiment we're doing i've had so frequent you know i've just had such bad luck keeping these dwarf garamis alive over the last several years i've just given up doing it and i'd love to keep one alive so this is kind of an experiment i know i'm kind of taking a risk on seeing whether this just lives or dies but I'm confident that putting that, um, you know, just adding some mineral ions to this tank is going to be enough to keep this powder blue nice and healthy. So thanks for watching all that. I hope that made sense to everybody. Hope you followed along with all that convoluted story about why I'm going to try to keep this powder blue alive again. So make sure you're subscribed and you will be able to follow along with the saga of my new powder blue here. Uh, don't forget this one is my 10 gallon living room tank. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you real soon on the next one.